Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Lorden Arts Channel. I'm John Lorden, and this is a story I wanted to tell you guys for weeks at this point. But we kept having these update videos, and like I said in last week's video, it's a good thing. I love that we're having so many updates, so much progress on these cases that we've talked about before. But this video, I think, is pretty important as well. And why do I think it's important? Because today's story is going to lead us to a conversation about personal safety. And inside of that, there's a little bit of a mystery. Do we have the right stalker identified or don't we? You might have heard of a viral video that kicked around in the middle of March. Uh, Jamie Coots is the name of this young woman. And as she's walking through downtown Vancouver, and if you've been watching Searchlight for the past couple of weeks, you know we've been talking a lot about downtown Vancouver. Here's a little bit of the video. She's got a guy that is walking behind her. And this continues for about 40 minutes. Uh, no matter what she does, no matter where she goes, this guy just keeps following her. And obviously, he's in a mask. Obviously, she's recording him. And she's being pretty upfront about recording him. She's holding her phone out. And this guy isn't going anywhere. If I recall correctly, I think she steps to the side at one point and stops. And he actually just stops and continues staring at her. He doesn't pass her by. Um Ultimately, what she winds up doing is finding a skate park that's occupied with a bunch of people, literally goes up to them. And you can watch this if you watch the full viral video and uh, is like, this guy's this guy's been following me. I, I don't know what to do. And the people at the skate park go and start asking him questions and, and kind of bugging him a little bit. And then he takes off from there. So already just in this point or just up to this point, one pretty strong lesson Um her using the camera wasn't enough to shake this guy off, but getting to a public place occupied with a bunch of other people certainly helped. Uh, let's go ahead and continue with some articles here over at bc.ctvnews.ca. Jamie Coots had just finished doing her grocery shopping and was walking home when she felt like someone was following her. Quote, I first noticed he was following me between Kiefer Street and Kiefer Place, she said. I decided to film so I could see how close behind me he was and what he was doing. Shortly after noticing, she stopped and she stopped walking and told the man that he could pass, but he just stared at her. Uh, would certainly freak me out. Over at globalnews.ca, uh, Vancouver police say that they've spoken to other possible victims after a Vancouver woman's disturbing report of being followed by a strange man for more than a half an hour. The encounter happened in the area of Kiefer and Columbia Streets in downtown Vancouver. Um, but very quickly, like I think her video came out on the 17th, if I recall correctly. Um, this one, this version of it's posted on the 19th. But this news article comes out on the 19th. Person of interest arrested. Mohammed Majidpour, a 33-year-old Vancouver man, has been charged with one count of assault with a weapon and one count of uttering threats. Now, it's interesting here because they're putting his name up in the title and then they're showing the guy from the footage. That's not so interesting if that's actually Muhammad. What is interesting is when we get to uh, Jamie's quote about this. But let's hear from the um, Vancouver Police Department spokeswoman, Constable Tanya Vicentin. Friday morning, a man was arrested after assaulting a female victim in downtown Vancouver. Majidpour has a lengthy and violent criminal history that includes multiple convictions for assault, uttering threats, and property crimes. Meanwhile, Jamie Coots, the woman who reported being stalked, doesn't believe the man arrested Friday is the same man who followed her Wednesday. She posted on Facebook on Saturday that she believes police arrested a different person and her alleged stalker has not been found. So I mentioned at the start of this video, um, we got to talk about some safety tips for a situation like this. Uh, thankfully, over at CTV News, they interviewed this lady. Her name is Chris Griffard, and she's a personal protection expert and a police officer. Uh, she spoke with CTV Morning Live, sharing ways that women can keep themselves safe. So just some ideas that I want to put out there. Um, she says, with any sort of stranger-on-stranger -stranger attack, specifically against women, one of the biggest commonalities is the predator will approach from behind. And obviously with what we're seeing in that video, that's certainly what's going on. 
Uh, so what I would suggest doing if somebody's walking behind you, don't give the back. Instead, casually step to the side of the sidewalk or side of the path and dig into your purse or pretend you get your cell phone and look down at your phone as a distraction, but keeping your mind and focus actually on them. Uh, interestingly, Jamie did try this and we heard the guy stops at that point and he just stares at her. So it, it's really freaky at that point because it's so clear that his intent is to follow her and you don't know what the rest of that intent is. Follow her until what? Until he sees some opportunity to attack until he sees some isolated location. Um, so as they pass, assuming they pass, make eye contact, shoulders back, chest up, head up, make that good solid eye contact, send that message that I see you. I know that you're there and I can identify you if I have to. Uh, if they stop and engage in communication or any sort of conversation, be strong, be assertive. If they tell you not to yell, yell. One of the biggest things that predators will do, they want to conduct this interaction in an area of isolation. If you can, put a barrier or an obstacle between you and that person. So when you're going to step to the sidewalk or to the side of the path, think about putting a park bench or an electrical box or a garbage can between you and that person to at least have some sort of barrier. I think that's a really good point as well. Don't know if it would have really helped in this case. It's just one of those things. This guy was, I don't know, he was in a different place. Uh, I don't think the phone was a bad idea. She's talking specifically about this instance. It's tough now because we're in an age where people have masks on. It's very difficult to identify them, uh, even to the point that Jamie doesn't think police have the right guy, which is interesting because, you know, she doesn't have a great shot. I think that that picture that we saw at the top of the article is probably the best shot that came off her camera of this guy. And I mean, yeah, you could you could see a bit of the bridge of his nose and his eyes, but could you make a solid confirmation on who this person is considering how much of his face is being covered by the mask? I, th I think it's pretty tough. Now, here's a really good point. Uh, being in her spot, I would have preferred maybe calling police and getting assistance on its way. I don't know why she didn't get to that step. I don't know if she was embarrassed about it or I, I'm just, I'm not sure. In this case, some things that I would suggest carrying are your keys. Don't put your keys between your fingers, which is strange because that's what I've always heard for using them as a defensive measure. But she's saying instead, wrap your key ring around your knuckle or your finger and be able to use that. So um, she's thinking of it more of like a kind of improvised brass knuckle, like, you know, hold one of the keys in your palm and then have the rest of it wrap up over your knuckle and then maybe back into your hand from there. Uh, you can also use a flashlight, a great blunt impact weapon to use against the clavicle or up into the face if you ever have to. Uh, she's got some other tips here. I'll have a link to this in the description box down below so you can check out the full article. But I also bumped into someone else responding to this video in a really cool way. Over at globalnews.ca, a Vancouver coffee shop has created what it's calling a code order for anyone to come in and use if they feel unsafe, if they're being stalked or if they need help. Uh, Stuart decided to let everyone know if they need help in the area to come in and order a non-fat Americano. A, an Americano is normally espresso and water, so it doesn't have any milk in it. So it's a drink that doesn't exist, he said. If staff hears the code order, then Stewart said the customer will be directed to sit down nearby, and then a staff member will go over and ask what the person needs, if that includes calling a friend or calling the authorities. It wasn't intended to create any kind of movement or inspire anybody else to do it, but just to let people know that we are here and we are a safe space, he added. I think that is really cool, and I hope it does inspire other people to do it. That's why I'm sharing it with you guys here. Um, the name of the coffee shop is Harkin for anyone that wants to support people looking out for other people. So within a few days, we had this guy that was arrested, and Jamie says she doesn't think that's him. But then another round of news hits about a month later, and now it has me wondering if maybe Jamie just can't make the confirmation because of that mask he was wearing. 
Vancouver stalking case, man charged a month after woman posts video of stranger following her. Police said 33-year-old Mohammed Majidpour of no fixed address has been charged with one count of criminal harassment in connection to the incident that occurred in Vancouver on March 17th. So sounds like they are charging him specifically for this instance. Uh, we're hoping this brings a lot of peace to the community, said Vancouver Police Constable Tanya Vicentin, because I know it created a lot of uproar as it should, a lot of anxiety. Police say their investigation began when a video was posted to social media. So they're being very clear this is about that occurrence. Uh, the woman who recorded the video, Jamie Coots, told CTV News on Thursday she was thankful for the arrest, but also praying that police have the right guy. She's still, she's just not sure. Uh, Vicentin couldn't say whether the suspect was the same person, but indicated Majidpour had a history with police. They're also talking about other charges that happened in this time frame, stuff that he had done on the 16th, stuff that he, he had done uh, the day after that. So it seems like even if that particular charge falls out, if Jamie can't identify him, I don't know how else they would continue to press with that charge. They've got other stuff that he did that week that effectively they're charging him with as well. Just wanted to share that with you guys as a way of maybe starting a conversation about some safety measures that we can all take if we're ever in a situation like that. And also that coffee shop idea. I think that's really, really cool. It'd be great if some national chain would, um, you know, kind of take on that type of movement and, and start issuing code words like that. Of course, that kind of works against it too, right? You can't have Starbucks come out and say, well, come in and order a, a non-fat Americano um, publicly too much because then everyone's going to be aware that that's what you do if you're in trouble, um, which could... I don't think it could escalate a situation, but it might be um, kind of headed off by someone that was aware of that information. So it's a, it's a challenging aspect, but I really appreciate that there's someone thinking along those lines and, and trying to help their community. What do you guys think? Let's talk about that in the comments down below. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. Please join me again on Friday for a brand new episode of Brain Scratch right here on the Lord and Arts channel. <laughs>